You are listening to the Nightline Sports Network, brought to you by Travis Dever and the Dever team, 386-690-1636. This is WDBO, 107.3 FM and AM 580, Orlando's news and talk. Welcome to Nightline at Night on WDBO, 107.3 FM and AM 580. Night Nation's only call-in show goes live now. All right. Hello, Night Nation. Hello, Orlando. This is Andrew Fagley, and this is Nightline at Night. We're live from the Dever Team Studios, brought to you by Chad Barlaw. Assisting injured veterans get the help they deserve. Give Chad a call, 407-599-9036, or visit ProtectingVets.com. You can also call Travis Dever for all your new Smyrna Beach real estate needs, 386-690-1636. And if you need a new or used car, truck, or Jeep, you can call me, and. Andrew Fagley, 386-736-3000, 386-736-3000, or visit me at DeLand Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Uh, we're taking your calls on here as well. If you want to call us, 844-580-9326, 844-580-9326, or you can use the open mic feature in the WDBO app. Once again, I'm Andrew Fagley at AP underscore Nightline on Twitter. I uh, got Big Ben Stout here with me at Big Social 32 on Twitter and Roger Phipps with me as well at Night Bingle on Twitter. Uh, and you can find all the rest of our content on nightlinesports.com. We're talking UCF sports and uh, not the greatest basketball showing last night, but not the worst as well. Uh, I'll take this uh, 63-49 loss against the number seven Houston Cougars uh, and uh, another loss earlier in the week against Wichita State, which we talked about last week, would, would probably be a, a kind of a rough time. I thought we were going to do it against Wichita State. I, I just I had a feeling and my feeling was wrong. They um, are they are our basketball version of Tulsa in, in the sense football, that we yeah. have literally never beaten Wichita State, which is still crazy for me to say. Not not just at there, we have literally never beaten Wichita State home or away. That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. So sixty three forty nine last night against the number seven team in the nation. They're the number seven team in the nation because of that defense and yeah. the forty nine points that we scored. Uh, not only because of their defense, but some bad shooting as well, I, I think. And, and a couple of players not showing up. They were there, you know, in in, oh, were they? in person, but they they didn't show up on the court. Yeah, so. yeah I'd, I'd agree with you there. I mean, eight, they're 18 and two. Uh, Houston is there. I mean, they're the number seven team in the country for, for a reason. reason. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, as you said, I mean, and. The scouting report on UCF this season is you've got to guard the perimeter. You have got to make it so the three-point line is not uh, – you can't get their feet set. You, uh, you can't get any easy shots from the outside. And Houston, with their phenomenal you know, defense and just the, the – they play so fundamentally sound um, that that they, they – use that scouting report to a T and they, uh, I mean, we got no easy shots from the outside. I mean, we wound up shooting 21% from the three point line. Um, Darren green Jr. had made those, you know, three straight threes to start off the game with nine and two, nine and two, nine to two, just based on those three uh, to start at the game. So off to a hot start, but unfortunately Houston is Houston and they, they played phenomenal. And then Wednesday night uh, or no, was yeah Wednesday, Wednesday against, night against yeah. uh, against Wichita State they were they got out to a good start as well but then fell off in the second half when we expect them to kind of come back they they're, they're kind of doing the opposite thing if they can actually put a game together where <laughs> yeah. they come out hot and end hot yeah that would be you know <laughs> what would happen that would be the the greatest thing ever Roger you got anything to say about on this yeah I mean when when it comes to Wichita State I mean the big thing for me what X marks the spot is definitely the um, three point line and the rebounds. Right. So again, um, you know, this was a close game and finished 84 79. Um, and at the line, I mean, we're talking about a percentage point difference between this game because both teams shot about equivalently. And then on top of that, the three point line 
they were within a percentage point, and that was the difference in between the games. So, you know, when it came to Wichita State, I, I agree with you. They came out hot. Uh, I was expecting us to pull that out and and win that game, but that's the bugaboo for us. Yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, and you're right. It was when you play at Wichita State, especially it's the, it's the little things that can that matter. And uh, when you're playing against just a tough defensive team, uh, last night was no different. And I, I agree. You know, we we had 16 turnovers. They had 14. We were playing good defense against them, but just a few like a few more mistakes down the stretch just just kind of cost us in that game. And then even even last night going against one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country, we actually played great defense against them. Um, uh, but they got a few key offensive rebounds when it counted. Uh, I mean, Dawkins even talked about after the game how how they held the ball down the you know about five minutes left in the game. They ha- they had the ball for about two minutes because they got three or four offensive rebounds in a row. You can't allow a, a team with the quality and the talent level and the fundamentals that Houston has to just be able to get that many second chances. Yeah. Well, it definitely did not turn out the way that we wanted it to. And, and we're going to talk uh, pretty much, I guess, the the entire show about <laughs> basketball. There's not a lot of football news going on. Uh a little bit of a recruiting event that UCF had last evening. Uh, what did they call it, Roger? The uh, hometown hero event. The hometown hero event, and that was, I guess, to bring local high school kids in, recruits, uh, and you know, do some recruiting. As far as that goes, they had the block party last night as well. Did Ben? Did you attend that at all while you were out there? So I didn't get a chance to uh, attend the block party. Um, I, I arrived a little bit. Uh, a little bit later, well, it was still early for the game, but a little bit later than I wanted to. I wanted to go out to the block party, but I heard from everyone who was there that it was a great time. And just a little random thing, uh, last night was the first time that the concession stands at the UCF Arena actually served alcohol. So, really? Uh, that is probably a precursor to next year's football season. We'll see. But um, but that was interesting as well. Beer I, and wine. Yeah. So in all areas, they all had, areas, all concession oh, wow. stands. Yeah. Interesting. That's really interesting. Actually, I thought I saw something about that, but I, I didn't click on what it, you know, whatever it was. So oh, yeah. that's that's cool. I don't know though if I. This is something we can talk about. Great. <laughs> um, I don't know if I want beer available in the entire stadium though. I, I don't because. Events that I've gone to, it's it's nice not to be puked on at, <laughs> at, at, at the bounce house. Uh, any other game, bowl games, other games that I've been to where there's been alcohol in, in the entire stadium, I've almost got puked on or been puked on every game. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You, know, you seem so, to have some really bad luck with people around you. But. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I make them drink or something. I'm not sure. But but it's I just don't like it. So, I mean, yeah. and. Yes, it would be nice for those of us that can handle our alcohol, but for those that, that can't, they make it difficult. And there's, I'm sure there's going to be more arguments and fights. And it's just the students that, that I, you know, I think I worry about more than, than anybody else. And they would have to figure that out somehow in those sections, you know. Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, though – it just from a straight revenue perspective, it's a oh, great yeah, idea. Absolutely. Um, I agree with a hundred percent for revenue. Yeah, and we've been to other stadiums as well. I mean, I remember going to the Tulane State going to Tulane Stadium, uh, on campus stadium. Well, like, I many, mean you, many years but it's ago. too late. Obviously, Nobody shows up there. You go to yeah. New Orleans, you're yeah. gonna get puked gonna get on or <laughs> step in puke <laughs> no anyway. Period. No doubt. It I just mean, kinda of smells that way. <laughs> it, <laughs> the entire place different. smells like that. Yeah. I mean that's that's nothing new. Yeah, but I mean it's urine. It's getting so, more and more. It's getting New more Orleans. And more if common, I think about New Orleans, sure. I think about smelling urine. That's that's pretty much it. <laughs> wow. But my point is, there's some good uh, that food it's, there too. It's but... becoming more and more common. Um, it, you know, all throughout uh, college athletics, it doesn't matter if it's an on-campus arena or stadium or not. Um, and so, uh, last night was a really rowdy crowd in general, um, and an awesome crowd actually. Uh, I was I was really proud of of the way that we showed up there, and it was. Uh, it kind of reminded me of the Michigan game, especially the way it started out. Um, but uh, hopefully we, there's more crowds to come here. We've got, you know, a limited amount of time left to try to make make some sort of case. Uh, I think that kind of time has passed for any out-large talk. Um, but who knows? Uh, who knows? So. I still think, though, that it should take – it shouldn't take number seven coming there for the crowd to be 
to be good at, at UCF basketball games. We talk about this yeah. all the time. Uh, I fortunately went to a school. I went to Kansas, and and you know that environment is just special. Mm-hmm. It's just one of those things. That, although the other night it wasn't too special either for KU. <laughs> I got uh, a whooping by Kentucky, yeah. and that wasn't good. At home, when college game day was there, that's it right. just you know not a good situation. Happens every once in a while, every once in a while. But that environment, and yes, it's hallowed ground of of college basketball. But that environment is what I wish that uh, UCF could become at some point with the student sections and with just rabid fans. And we've discussed there's all kinds of things going on in Orlando. It's obviously not, you know, like Kansas, Lawrence, Kansas. There's not much going on except a basketball <laughs> yeah. game. Uh, and, you know, it just being hallowed ground like it is, you know, it, it it's hard to approach a lot of schools to get to that point. Well, just um, because you mentioned student section, that, that that's a that's an area of the arena that always shows up. The student section is full. It's loud. Uh, now that the student section used to be kind of broken up on, on both sides of the court. Uh, now it's all on one side of the court because there's a more premium area on the other side. Um, and that section is always packed. Oh, and, good. And it's la- and been last in a night, long time. Yeah, I mean, it's last been a couple of years. Was, uh, sometimes, sometimes it's not only when school's out, right? Uh, right. When school's in, it's, it is oh, good. It is slam and packed and they are loud and they bring the energy up in the whole arena. It's really just building out the entire arena and the season ticket base. Which which needs a little bit more work for basketball, um, but as we progress to the Big Twelve, it certainly will uh, get that's amped up. Yeah, yeah, I, I do think that that's the key, and and everything's going to get amped up to the Big Twelve, especially the basketball. Um, we're in a great basketball conference right now, obviously with number seven, and I don't know if anybody else is ranked at this point, but. Uh, the American is not a bad basketball conference by any means. Um, there's been national champions yeah. in the American. There has been final four, you know, Houston was in the final four last year. So it's nothing to shake a stick at for sure. Um, it just, it's definitely going to get much more high profile in the big 12 basketball. Um, and as we're, well, we're so. bringing the top teams of the basketball conference for the AAC into the big 12 with right, us. I mean, Houston sure. and Cincinnati yeah. are pretty much the cream besides other, you know, like Memphis, which I'll say, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When you never know, Memphis may be there one of these days. They keep talking about uh, further expansion and stuff like that. So I would think possibly a Memphis or somebody could get in there like that. So yeah, it's, it's going to be exciting for all the sports though, going into the big 12. Uh, I can't wait. Yeah, uh, no we'll doubt. be re- speaking of can't wait. We'll be right back. Um, and we'll talk a lot more about all this stuff. An auto accident can change your life forever. At Chad Bar Law, we are raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney. Hi, I'm Chad Barr, and I want you to know that our entire team is dedicated to providing you with the representation you deserve in your greatest time of need. If you or a loved one have been injured in an auto accident, call 407-599-9036 for a free consultation or visit chadbarlaw.com. At Chad Bar Law, our clients come to us in need and leave us family. Offices, Altamont Springs. Hey, this is Travis Dever, Kai's Real Estate, the Dever team, New Smyrna Beach, your source for real estate and everything else, New Smyrna Beach, proud sponsor of Nightline. Call me anytime at 386-690-1636. That's 386-690-1636. Let me show you my hometown, New Smyrna Beach, UCF's favorite beach. Go Knights and charge on. Looking for more out of your Porsche? Look no further than Flat6Motorsports.com. They have the widest selection of aftermarket Porsche parts anywhere in the world. With over 85 product lines and in-depth expertise, Flat6Motorsports.com is your one-stop shop for any Porsche performance needs. Whether you're shopping for intakes, exhaust, suspension, or tuning, they have you covered. Flat6Motorsports.com is the premier Porsche aftermarket specialist. Check them out at Flat6Motorsports.com. And now, back to Nightline at Night on WDVO, 107.3 FM and AM 580. Call now at 844-580-9326. 
All right, back on Nightline at Night with you. I'm Andrew Fegley, live from the Dever, Dever Team Studios, brought to you by Chad Barla. I mess this up all the time. Uh, <laughs> live radio, folks. Yep, live radio. I, I, my brain goes faster than my mouth does. It's always been like that. Uh, so we're talking about UCF Sports Nightline at Night. Uh, women's basketball is doing good. Our, our men's basketball is not doing that great. But but uh, women, they beat Wichita State the other night. They had no problem with it. Yeah, Diamond Battles with 14 big points. And again, that defensive intensity is coming back uh, and winning games. I mean, you see it. We talked about how successful Houston has been on the men's side. Well, our women's team has one of the top rated defenses in the country. And uh, Coach Abe just has them firing all cylinders. And between the, um, you know, the, the game against USF and, and everything else, um, we've got three losses on the season and uh, the team's uh, killing it. So very proud. Uh, we, we had Diamond come back this year. We had uh, – Amasani Kaba come back this year, and that was uh, that was big for us. And and Sanders has really really taken off. And you know, with folks focusing on Diamond Battles, Sanders has had an opportunity to drive the paint, and she's played really really well uh, this year. So very proud of the team, and um, you know they're doing what the men can't. Yeah, and one one of the things that stood out for me yesterday. So you're right. Uh, I think it's the last two years. This is the this is the third season in a row, I think, but uh, at least the uh, last two years. Uh, we've led the country, or at least top five in team defense. They're just they're just phenomenal. Last year they were one of two teams I think ever that held held um, the opponents under fifty points for the entire season, which is just amazing. Uh, one of the things that stood out for me for last night is we talk a lot about on the men's side the depth that Johnny Dawkins has to play with. Coach Abe has a lot of depth as well. Over over nine or nine players played over 15 minutes last night or uh, on uh, Saturday afternoon. And so she's got a lot of depth to play with as well. I mean, you got somebody like Lish Lewis uh, coming off the bench who was a starter almost all of last year. You know, you got some great shooters coming off the bench. Even Brittany Smith started a lot of games last year. Um, and so you got some size and some great shooting coming off the bench. And so she's got a lot of tools to play with over there. Coach Abe does. And, and she just, one of the more underrated coaches on campus. I think she's um, does a phenomenal job with that program. And hopefully they can, they're looking with only three losses in the year. They're looking like they're poised to um, potentially get an at large bid, but hopefully we can knock off um, the cows this year in the, in the conference tournament and claim that prize for them as well. All right. Did you guys know that we have a top 10 program at UCF in, in a women's sport right now? Would that be tennis? Yeah, that well, you're looking guess. at my screen, so that's <laughs> well, that like been, totally not I don't have the, my guess. I don't have the luxury to look on your screen, but that would have been my guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I know men's and women's tennis are, are always a pretty pretty top program. Roger can see my screen, so that's <laughs> totally not fair. Uh, yeah, they were ranked number 10. I don't know where they'll, they'll wind up after this week's loss to Auburn, who was number 25. They lost four to nothing against them uh women's tennis i mean and men's tennis uh men's tennis is number 20 right now so we'll take that that's good yeah john roddick does such a great job with that program it's one of the it's one of the those sports where john roddick actually runs the kind of both of those those teams the men's and women's side and both of those programs have been on the rise over the last five years yeah he's the head coach for both of them which is interesting yeah and we double tap really because we have john roddick who uh was a top recruiter but we also have the utsa complex in lake nona also that is a huge (laughs) thing because it gets a lot of exposure to our our college athletes to professional tennis and um you know it's paid dividends when they when they announced that it was a, a huge deal then and it's it's panning out to be a, a huge success for our program and he's andy roddick's brother correct correct yes, yeah. yes. interesting that's that's crazy i've always thought that that was weird that you know andy roddick who was a tennis you know champion for very uh the long time as his brother is the head coach at ucf all right <laughs> We're going to take another break, and we'll be back, and we'll talk about this and a lot more stuff when we come back on Nightline at Night. See you soon. If you haven't figured it out yet, I love Tijuana Flats. 
I would love them even if they weren't a partner with us on the Nightline Sports Network. They have all kinds of great Tex-Mex food, and it's fresh, by the way. Made to order burritos, tacos, enchiladas, chimichangas, quesadillas, bowls, nachos, and taco salads. And if you haven't tried the queso, you are completely missing out. It is the best queso that I've ever had in my life. Absolutely hands down. And the sauce bar that they have, everything from wild to mild in there, absolutely awesome, awesome stuff. Not only do I love the food at Tijuana Flats, but I love the company, a UCF-born company. And they give back to the community with the Justin Queso Foundation. So head to your local Tijuana Flats, Tex-Mex for everyone. Hey Jeep Wrangler owners, have you ever sat in your office at work and watched the rain just pour into your Jeep because the weatherman said that there was a zero chance of rain or you put your doors back on because there was a 100% chance and then not a drop of rain fell? Well, there's a company out there that can help take the worry away and give you the peace of mind to be without your doors. The company's called Life Without Doors. They make waterproof rain curtains and dash covers for Wranglers. Life Without Doors is there to help make the decision to leave the doors at home an easy one. Find out more at lifewithoutdoors.com. Spice up your company with homemade marketing services from Tasty Gravy Creative. Tasty Gravy serves up the menu of budget-friendly marketing, graphic design, and public relations services customized to your specific goals. Co-owned by a UCF graduate, Tasty Gravy can help refresh your brand, strengthen your online presence, or reinforce your company's message. Contact Tasty Gravy for help with your website, social media, marketing, advertising materials, and more. Visit TastyGravy.com. And now, back to Nightline at Night on WDVO. 1073 FM and AM 580. Call now at 844-580-9326. Back on Nightline at Night with you. I'm Andrew Fegley, live from the Dever Team Studios, brought to you by Chad Bar Law. Assisting injured veterans get the help they deserve. Give Chad a call 407-599-9036 or visit protectingvets.com. You can also call Travis Dever for all your new Smyrna Beach real estate needs, 386-690-1636. And if you need a new used a uh, new or used car, truck, or Jeep, you can call me, Andrew Fegley, at 386-736-3000 or come visit me at Deland Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Deland, Florida. Uh, we're taking your calls, 844-580-9326, 844 844- 580-9326, or you can use the open mic feature in the WDBO app. Once again, I'm Andrew Fegley at AP underscore Nightline on Twitter. Got Big Ben Stout here with me at Big Social 32 on Twitter and Roger Phipps at Night Bengal. Night Bengal. Uh, or, you know, <laughs> speaking of, we're watching the uh, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Bengals uh, participate in the AFC Championship right now. And Roger, obviously with the, the Twitter handle, Knight Bengal, is a big Bengals fan, and I am a lifelong <laughs> diehard Chiefs fan. Uh, in fact, I'm even surprised that I'm on the radio right now. I normally would, would be glued to the TV <laughs> uh, during times like this, but it is tied up at 21-21 right now with 8.38 uh, left to go in the fourth quarter. It's a little too close for comfort. Uh, so, Roger, you can't talk. I'm turning your mic off. <laughs> this, is, this is like this is like last year's Super Bowl with like Nightline on Nightline uh, going up. Yeah, so <laughs> crime yeah. going up. Last year, yeah, you, yeah. With the Buc- I'm a Bucks fan. Yeah, you're a huge Bucks fan. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, this is uh, this is not good. I don't like it. Uh, speaking of though, Chiefs football and and. Uh, Bills. The Bills last week, uh, Gabe Davis uh, set a former UCF uh, football player, by the way, and he he set an NFL record for uh, most catches in the playoffs, uh, most, most touchdown, touchdown catches, catches. Yeah, in four the playoffs. Them. Yeah, um, three against my Kansas City Chiefs. That I was that was difficult for me because I uh, obviously I wanted to root for Gabe, but I didn't. 
I, I didn't want to, you know, score three touchdowns against yeah, my four. Chiefs. Yeah, four. F- four. Yeah, that was Whatever. the record. Yeah. That was wow, the reason why it was the record. In. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, just clarifying, that was the record. <laughs> Not three, but <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> and I, I was like, that was one of the most hard sports moments that I've ever had because I wanted to cheer for him, but I was like, wait a second. You're cheering for him to, like, score these touchdowns that he wasn't even getting touched on. Uh, and, and it was it was rough. So yeah, uh, our group text. You were like, "Can somebody please guard Gabe Davis?" Well, yeah, no, nope, they so they weren't open? guarding him the entire game, yeah. and I just was like, "Why are y'all not like <laughs> the entire game?" They didn't guard him. He would, you know, the four touchdowns were the only touchdowns that they scored, and and they were just why he was wide open, standing in the end zone on one of them waving. Yeah, the, like, the last one I think it was. Yeah, he was just standing there. I was like, "What's going on?" Then, like yeah. nobody within. 15 yards of it, but hey, it worked out for your Chiefs. Yeah, well, <laughs> barely. That yeah. was a that was a heck of a game. I mean, watching uh, watching Gabe, and then we had Mike on the other side. Yeah, yeah. Mike Hughes. That was the other thing, and all the UCF fans forgot all about Mike Hughes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> being being on the team on the, the Chiefs as well. He's having a good game today uh, so far. I guess I I don't know really what's going on here. Uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I don't want it. It looks like it's going to turn into one of these uh, these last second games again, and I, I really just don't want this to happen. We're well familiar. UCF fans are are really familiar with uh, Burrow as well and Jamar Chase. Yeah, from uh, the Fiesta Bowl debacle as well. Uh, Joe Burrow has definitely you know come on a bit uh, in his time in the ever, NFL and ever really since well. that hit he basically uh, it, we we turned and he's him credited into, uh, that uh, yeah. who was it that Aaron hit Evans was it no, no it Joey Aaron, Connors Joey Connors Joey Connors that's right yeah, yeah when Joey Connors hit him in the Fiesta Bowl and like. I thought he took his head off, honestly. Uh, they brought out smelling salts. I don't know how they allowed him to continue to play. To well, be honest, I wish they, they probably didn't. should have. I but wish it, they did But he is, exactly. <laughs> they have, He's credited that hit with, like, kind of turning his, you know, whole thing around and, and you know, becoming. Well, Ogeron even had a uh, thing on Twitter, I think it was last week, where he said the same thing. He said he was a completely different quarterback after that hit. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm watching this game like way closer than I probably should be. Um, should we talk more about basketball or yeah, anything else? Or uh, actually, we got the Kent State game was announced. Yeah, if Kent we talk State, about that. I guess yeah. uh, an off uh, or out of conference uh, football game for 2023. Kent State uh, lost the BYU game, but we're really thinking at this point that's probably going to be a conference game anyway and so that that would have probably been canceled we weren't sure when we're going to the big 12 still we're still not but there's been a lot more talk about the big 12 being ready to be a 14 team league in 2023 which texas and houston aren't supposed to leave for the sec until 2025 2024 2025 so that would be quite interesting. Um, and they still would do nine conference games, I think, right? Like if, if it was that big of a league, Texas and Oklahoma staying in for a little, a few years, for right? For a year, yeah, yeah. For, for a year or two. Yeah, and right now their they're, uh, word is that the, they're staying because the buyout is so big on the grain of rights that uh, they're going to stay. So there's a chance that we could play Oklahoma and Texas as conference. Players. I would love to play Oklahoma, especially if Dylan Gabriel – is their starting quarterback. I'd love to play him if he's sitting on the bench, which I hope he's is yeah. where he's at personally. Uh, but it, but if he's the starter, I'm all uh, I'm all about it. Absolutely. I mean, you think that the odds are if that if that scenario happens, um, then you with the amount of conference games that you have to play in the Big Twelve, Texas or Oklahoma or maybe both, we we would play them. So that that's going to be. Interesting. I, I I would agree with you. Obviously, since Dylan is the quarterback there, he would he would be uh, that would be the team that I would want to play of those two. And this is my other thing. I, I've I've been telling you guys this from the beginning. This is going to be rough on me as well with Kansas and UCF being in the same conference. I went to Kansas, uh, played football there. Uh, luckily, it looks like. From what I've heard, they're going to keep uh, when they do divisions. They're going to keep north south, north south, which it's always been north and south. Uh, I hope that they keep it like that. So Kansas and UCF would be in different in different uh, divisions. Divisions, yeah, so. uh, yeah. Because when uh, Oklahoma and Texas leave, that would allow those divisions to stay intact as well. Although 
uh, unless they have permanent crossovers like us in Cincinnati. We we play Cincinnati less. Uh, I was well, yeah, and then that's fine. I mean, I I, I don't care. I mean. Uh, yeah, we've played Cincinnati. I'm looking forward to the games against the Big 12 teams that we haven't played, not the ones that have been in our conference, Houston and, and Cincinnati. We would be in the same con- the same division as Houston, though. Right. Um, and that would probably be our natural rival, I would think. Although theirs is, you know, with some of the other Texas teams, so that's the whole thing's going to get be interesting anyway. Anytime a conference adds teams, they have to create you know, or facilitate some kind of rivalry action between somebody in the conference. So, yeah, you would think that we're going to, we're going to be able to just kind of form a new rivalry. I I mean, I would imagine for the first few years, it'll still be, you know, Cincinnati UCF will be more of a, you know, the butting heads type. Um, But obviously, as you mentioned, like we've, we've got a lot more to look forward to in the big 12, as far as opponents go right now, when it comes to Cincinnati and football, we, we look forward to that. I personally on the basketball front, I'm just looking forward to, uh, a nightline road trip to uh, the first game in uh, Allen Fieldhouse, oh, and, uh, and I just, I, I, because I, I really, I want to make a point to go to that first UCF Kansas game at Kansas, just, just because I, that's on my bucket list. I've got to go see a basketball game there. So I think I'm everybody that. should. I yeah. mean, you know how I feel about Allen Fieldhouse and all that stuff. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> how. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how I would handle that. That would be, I mean, I would be extremely excited to have you guys on my college campus, even though I'm a, I'm obviously a huge of UCF course. fan. I wouldn't be doing the show for seven, uh, <laughs> doing nightline shows for seven years and not be a huge, you know, UCF fan. But when it comes to your alma mater versus, mm-hmm. you know, UCF, yeah. I, it would be extremely difficult for me to show up in, in our house not having some blue crimson well, and blue on it, it would be you know for me it's it's just uh super exciting just to be in that venue and some of the other venues yeah. um you know because there's so much history behind that and um it's not just history but i think it it, it also goes to show where our program has gone uh, and if we end up being competitive in the big 12 which is going to take a lot for our program to move up, but you're already seeing, um, you know, the impact of that on the football side. I mean, on the hometown hero event, we've got five stars, we've got f- four stars, we've got all those folks that are on campus. I think the same thing can happen for basketball as we get closer to that uh, transition, which hopefully is 2023. Yeah, I don't think the transition is going to be as hard for football than it will be for the other, some of the other yeah. sports. Oh, I agree. Basketball, basketball I think, is, is going to be huge. I, I yeah. think it's going to be a huge difference. Um, I mean, it's the equivalent of us going into the SEC for football, for football. In, exactly. in, in a sense. Yeah, in a right. sense. So it's a it's a it's a big deal. It, at five of the last six years, it's been rated the number one basketball conference in America. You, this year's not that much different. Um, they're they're they've got some phenomenal. I teams think football on that side. will struggle for a couple of years, but I don't think it'll it'll struggle for for long. Um, and I don't think basketball will either, to be honest with you. We, we do, uh, we have the last couple of seasons had the, uh, high, you know, continually build upon the highest, we can, we say the highest rated conference or, uh, recruiting, recruiting class classes. and, and yeah. next year is going to be no different. The highest rated recruiting class coming in next year. Um, it'll top this year and the year before. So we'll, we'll continue to build upon that. And, um, with guys like Darius Johnson, um, you know, as he progresses and, and a few others, a few of the other young guys we have, um, we should be hopefully making good strides on that front. Yeah. And, and the recruiting's only going to get better when we're actually there. Uh, also you know. very true. Yeah. Very I mean, true. I, I, I've, we've kind of seen it even building up because these are the players that are being recruited right now, especially in football that will be playing, you know, and, and basketball be playing in the big 12 especially if we go in 2023 i mean everybody that's pretty much on the roster except for the seniors now i guess or super seniors uh i think that's still a thing super seniors there will be for i guess four years uh because of the covid year two straight mr floridas um you know uh in a row that we've gotten on our roster. So uh, McDonald's all Americans, you know, the, those are big names. It's just a question of, can we expand that footprint beyond just our, our recruiting base in here in Florida to, to get those kind of, and, and the, and the best players, no matter what the sport, they want to be on good teams. 
they want to compete against the best. And that's the pitch, right? When you when you're talking about Big 12 basketball, the showcase for these guys coming in is going to be humongous. And that's the reason why we're going to get the the these top recruits here here from here on out hopefully. Yeah. Uh, it's it's going to they're going to have to. And yeah, well, they it, have to. I mean, we have, have to get more to. physical for yeah. sure is one of the other things. Yeah. Uh bigger, faster, stronger. Um in the entire you know, sports realm of, of UCF for sure. Okay. We're going to take another break here. Uh, we're going to be right back and we'll do our closing segment and we'll have the, uh, T1 of flats hot take of the week coming up. I'm Jeff Allen. Join me each and every week on the Nightline Sports Network for the AAC Report. We bring you in-depth coverage of each school in football, basketball, baseball, softball, soccer, golf, tennis, and more, as well as bring you insider interviews and focus in on the biggest games and news of the week. That's all right here each week on the AAC Report, only on the Nightline Sports Network. Welcome this is a promo for the Take a Left at Albuquerque podcast new to the Nightline Sports Network. You should listen to it. I say things like this. We need to stop blaming Jerry because we would do the exact same thing if we owned the Dallas freaking Cowboys. Do you know how much fun it is to own the Dallas Cowboys? My guests will say things sometimes like uh, this. It's, it's the Lord of the Flies thing that happens when they don't understand that things are wrong spoiler alert until piggy dies yeah. um Lord it, it, of the flies has been out for like it, like 100 years it, like, it, i don't yeah, even know yeah yeah, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. sorry sorry to everyone at home yeah. who i spoiled the book for a book's been out for like 90 years or something and sometimes rarely though i'll say really stupid things like this if they don't make it out of the west and the raptors get to the finals I will go on either this show or whoever show and say that Kawhi Leonard is overrated. I just because I have too much evidence of it. New episodes drop every Friday with me and some of my good friends right here on the Nightline Sports Network. And now back to Nightline at Night on WDBO 107.3 FM and AM 580. Call now at 844-580-9326. All right, back on Nightline at Night with you, live from the Dever Team Studios, brought to you by Chad Bar Law. This is our final segment of the evening, and we usually uh, wind this up with the Tijuana Flats Hot Take of the Week, so let's do that. Welcome to the Tijuana Flats Hot Take of the Week. Visit TijuanaFlats.com for takeout or delivery, or visit your local Tijuana Flats. Tex-Mex for everyone. All right, Tijuana Flats, uh, obviously the best uh, fresh Mex uh, food anywhere around, in my opinion. I love it. Uh, I go there at least probably once a week. They're in your neighborhoods. Please go check them out. They are an awesome company, a UCF-born company, and uh, great, great food. So uh, Tijuana Flats Hot Take of the Week is our segment uh, to give you a hot take of some kind. I'm going to let you go first, Roger, this week. All right. Since last year, uh, my or last year, last week, my Tijuana Flats hot take of the week was flaming hot. I'm gonna say <laughs> it this, went up in smoke, unfortunately. Yes, unfortunately. Um, unlike uh, last week's, I'm gonna say that the Tijuana Flats hot take of the week is that the women's basketball team will go four for four over the next four games to include defeating the cows, even without KK Wright from last year. Diamond Battles is gonna lead the team to victory. Already been. All right. Um, this this could wind up being. Uh, I hope it doesn't go up in smoke as well. But um, uh, we're twelve and seven right now as a men's basketball team. We have nine games left, and then a guaranteed at least one more um, uh, co- in a game in the conference tournament. So that's ten guaranteed games to play. I I say that our team, our men's basketball team, is going to pull it off. We're going to be at least twenty wins this season. So that's eight of the next ten games we're gonna we're gonna pull off. So that's it. Probably a really hot take at this moment, but uh, that would that's an optimistic view. I'm trying to speak it into existence. All right. I'm going to go with a football one. Uh, Kalia Davis invited to the NFL scouting combine uh, this uh, week was in, invited into that. It's in April. 
Uh, I'm going to say that even with his ACL tear from, from this year, that he gets drafted. He will not be a free agent. He will be drafted. I'm not going to, mm. you know, I don't know what round, but I think that he will be picked up by someone. Uh, has a motor that goes for days, uh, doesn't take plays off and stuff like that. So as a defensive tackle or a defensive end or whatever he's going to be uh, in the NFL, I just, I feel like he gets drafted this, this, uh, year those so. of us who have watched him he's an nfl player he's Absolutely. good yeah for sure i i, I agree with you somebody's going to take a shot a at little him. size variance yeah. there that may be an issue but i just feel like somebody will take a chance even coming off of the acl um he should be good to go by the by the scouting combine though so all right uh that's gonna do it for us it's been been fun having all three of us here again by the way uh we'll be back next week go knights charge on is the new home of WDBO. WDBO. 107.3 FM and AM 580. Orlando's news and talk. And where Orlando turns first for breaking news, weather, and traffic 24 hours a day. Listen on the WDBO app or at WDBO.com. Live team coverage starts now. From ABC News, I'm Chuck Sievertson. We're still looking for the source of the carbon monoxide that sent about a dozen people, including children, from the pool area of a hotel in Marysville, Ohio, to hospitals yesterday. First responders say they were unconscious. Look into heaters, uh, HVAC systems, uh, anything that could have developed and produced carbon monoxide. Marysville Police Chief Tony Brooks, the U.N. Security Council, to meet tomorrow in the Ukraine situation. Oksana Markarova, Ukraine's ambassador to the U.S. on CBS's Face the Nation. Since 2014, for eight years, we are at war and we are defending our country. At the same time, in order to defend our country, we cannot afford to panic. She says they're not downplaying the risk. The snow in Boston, says Mayor Michelle Wu. It ties the record set in 2003 for the largest single day snowfall. More than 23 inches in Boston. South Florida reporting iguanas falling out of trees. A cold snap sometimes caused the tree dwellers systems to slow down they let go stacy cone of the palm beach zoo they're up in the trees on the branches sleeping and then because they get so cold they lose that ability to hang on and then they do fall out of trees a lot the battle against covid mass vaccination sites back at the sonoma county fairgrounds in california's bay area county vaccine chief dr umila shendi people had a hard time getting in there were many people of course who were infected with omicron and of course they're not going to be able to get their boosters at that time but also there were staffing shortages Howard Hessman, who played the radio DJ Dr. Johnny Fever on the sitcom WKRP in Cincinnati, and the actor turned history teacher Charlie Moore on head of the class, has died at 81 on WKRP. I know you probably think that a personable hip DJ like myself has a date for the show tonight. Yes. Let's not beat around the bush, okay? I'm sorry, Johnny, but I'm already going with somebody else. You could have beaten around the bush a little longer. <laughs> You're listening to ABC News. This is Matt Crowder live at the Shell Station on 41st Street, reporting on the free gas app called Get Upside that's letting people all over the country earn cash back on every gallon of gas they buy. Excuse me, miss. Have you heard of the Get Upside gas app? Of course. People are earning as much as $300 a year with the Get Upside app. It's so easy. Open the app to see nearby gas stations offering money back, pick the one you want, and get up to 25 cents a gallon cash back every time you buy gas. Wow. Well, there you have it. Stop paying full price for gas. Download the free Get Upside gas app and earn up to 25 cents a gallon when you buy gas. This is Matt Crowder, Radio News Network. Download the free Get Upside app now in the App Store or Google Play to earn up to 25 cents a gallon cash back when you buy gas. Use promo code TODAY for a 50 cents per gallon bonus on your first tank. That's up to 75 cents a gallon on your next fill-up. You can cash out anytime to PayPal or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Get up to...